and it's headphones nail. What's up guys and welcome back to Headphones Neil Reviews. I'm your host as always, Headphones Neil, bringing you my slightly truncated episode mostly because I went on a vacation but filled episode of reviews for this week. So to jump right into it, um, I did, like I said, I did go on vacation so the stuff I watched is a little bit on the low end but I did have a chance to start watching Fallout. So ups and downs, so, I'll re- so the Android app review is not really going to be anything specific aside from or anything new from what I covered before regarding camera settings, but I wanted to share a little bit of um, that as well and share the links to the photo gallery and the YouTube playlist. So with that being said, this week's cover image and background audio was generated again in image FX and audio FX with the prompts of trop or with the prompt of tropical sci-fi apocalypse amusement park. I used the same prompt for both just to have a consistent prompt and um, I'm using them for both so I thought I would share that a little bit of what that prompt is. Um, and like I said, it was they were both done in um, you know, using the same uh, AI kitchen generation tool that uh, Google released recently. So with that being said, um, I have started watching Fallout Season 1 so depending on when you hear this. I'm about a couple of episodes in, so now I've been introduced to all the major characters, um, notably Lucy and her father, the shelter she's living in, um, a little bit of an introduction with the Raiders, um, the ghoul who is actually a very intriguing character, I like his character quite a bit, that military base um, with the mech suits and all of that. So. All in all, so far a pretty interesting story. Looks like it's going to be all about Lucy trying to find her um, father. So um, the first episode was definitely long. The transitions were kind of weird, mostly because it felt like it was meant for TV rather than a streaming platform. So um, that could have been done a little bit better. But as far as the show itself goes, I recommend, so far I'm all in, I recommend watching it. I shouldn't have spent so much time waiting to get started on watching it. So um, I don't know if I'll give any overall updates. I probably may be done with the show um, by next week. So I'll be able to do a full season review. But regardless of that, if it goes into the following week, I'll have an update on that next week, no matter what. Um, I also had a chance to watch the season finale, or sorry, the series finale for Young Sheldon. So I did watch the first couple of episodes and it was fine. I mean, I also haven't seen every single episode of The Big Bang Theory, but I also have nothing against either show. Just um, it's not that it's formulaic or more of the same, Um, but it does get, uh, I I don't know. I just couldn't watch every single episode. But since I had watched the beginning of Young Sheldon, I thought I would watch the series finale. And a lot of it dealt with the loss of Sheldon's dad, his, um, um, how he processed it, how the rest of his family processed it, and all of that. So all of that was handled very, very well. It was very intriguing. It gave more depth and meaning to when um, Howard's mom passed away and uh, when Sheldon told him that when his dad passed away, he didn't have anybody, but Howard has them. So it shows Sheldon's state of mind that he was very alone in his processing. He didn't have anyone he considered his equals or friends or anything like that. But with Howard, um, he does have all of them. So um, it gave him a lot more context to that. And then the final episode with the memoirs as far as um, older Sheldon reminiscing about his youth, his relationship with his mom, grandmother, uh, siblings, all of that. So... It felt like a good rounding to that whole series. Even without seeing it, you can see... I mean, you can kind of fill in the blanks of what happened throughout this series. So, um, at some point, if it's streaming on, like, Netflix or um, Amazon Prime or something, I might give that a watch or something on and off just to see how the show progresses. But overall, worth watching, so I recommend watching that. Now, as far as the Android tip slash follow-up goes, so... 
Last weekend, had a chance to go to Cancun for a few days, uh, visit Chichen Itza one day, do a day trip for that. And overall, it was a good trip, very relaxing, very hot and humid. So it wasn't anything special that we did, mostly just spend some time to relax, go see um, the Mayan temples in that city over at Chichen Itza because I'd never seen it before. So, um, you know, just some downtime to relax and unwind kind of thing. So, in the show notes, I'll have a post to the photos that I took. Um, all of them were done on a mobile cell phone using the stock OnePlus 10 Pro camera app. Um, the only photo that I kind of wish I'd taken two of was the Pina Colada on the beach because. Um, overall, the photo itself is good, but I kind of wanted to put more focus on the drink and have the tree in the background or do, um, even focus, but then the argument could be made that, um, because it was frosty and, um, the reflection of the moisture or whatever made it, um, a little bit blurry, you can throw it off or whatever, but... Um, aside from that, everything was done on the cell phone. Um, if any edits were actually made to the um, photos, they were done mostly in Google Photos for cropping, color adjustment, and things like that. I don't think I did too much in Snapseed this time around, so um, any brightness or color adjustments were, like I said, were done in Google Photos. So um, de definitely check those out, and that's kind of the state of mind for that. All of the videos were taken using the um, uh, stock ca camera app again with uh, the settings at 4K and 60 frames per second. The notable, and this time I get around, I didn't forget to make sure I checked that setting. The only video that is the exception is the time lapse video of the sunrise, which is at 4K, but that's because of a uh, app and device limitation where it, that's the max it records at. So um, still at 4K, but um otherwise um all settings were maxed out for that and all other video options so um it was a i, I want to say about a half an hour 35 I think, or actually sorry maybe 35 to 37 minute actual time passage and it compressed it into a three minute and 40 second time lapse so you can see it getting brighter um and i did have a chance to test the pause button so i could pause the time lapse move the phone a little bit higher and um, make a little bit of adjustment to get the actual sun in the viewfinder. So um, there is that, but it took a few videos. Um, the heat was the biggest obstacle, for example, at Chichen Itza. So when you're uh, watching the some of the videos, or one of the videos, I think, of, the, um, of me panning around the whole area, it skips a little bit just because of how hot it was and system resources and all of that stuff. So, um, Nothing I could really do about that. I tried to keep my phone off for a little bit and try again, but it didn't. It wasn't any better. So, um, just something to consider there. Where in when you're in high, um, heat, that it can cause a problem when um, recording videos. Um, I think photos were okay, just because um, it was a picture and pictures are pictures. So um, something to think about there, but. Um, that's all I really got to say about that. So I, like, it goes back to what I think I said when I came, when I was reviewing my India trip that when you're taking photos, most modern video, um, most modern cell phone videos and ca or for camera apps have really good settings. So always recommend playing around with the best settings there. So for example, if your video, if your camera app supports 4K video recording at 60 frames per second, I recommend that. Mostly because YouTube and Google Photos does not support anything more. If you do have other ways, uh, or if you don't mind using 4K and 120 frames per second and uploading at 4K 60 frames per second to YouTube, then by all means do that and keep a local copy so you have a better frame rate um, or frames per second. The um, other thing is Google Photos doesn't support 120 frames per second, so it's going to randomly slow down your video. So something to consider there. That's why I say 40, 4K and 60 frames per second now. Um, for pictures, I re always recommend framing and um, focusing your shots. So keep your grid lines on so that you can easily uh, center or focus some of the stuff that you're or some of the photos that you take. Um, so with that being said, I didn't really play too much of uh, Knights of the Old Republic 2 this week. Um, I've gotten as far as uh, finishing uh, Narshada and 
uh, Goto's yacht. Um, I have also beaten the um, Jedi Master who is hiding out on Nar Shaddaa. So um, now it's time for the next level, which I think is going to be um, Dantooine. I could technically do Korriban, but I, like I said, I'm going to save that for later. So I'll probably do Dantooine next, but... Look out for those gameplay videos resuming soon. Um, I say that because now that I'm all in on um, Fallout, I think I want to finish watching that so that show, be done with it, and um, get that off the list as a show that I watched. So I'll probably resume playing that or playing that to the Old Republic once I finish watching Fallout. Um, and then as far as my weekly gameplay for Roller Coaster Tycoon One. Um, I had a chance to play Leafy Lake. Um, overall, not a terrible park. Um, I think it was just a matter of making sure um, I keep rides going. Um, it, they didn't like too many scary roller coasters, which is a continuation, from, I think, from the prior week. So it's one of those things where um, I just need to make sure that roller coasters are not terribly scary and make sure I keep adding stuff, uh, new rides, move around stuff to accommodate stuff, make sure I have a log flume that's a generally always successful ride um, and playing from there. So um, with that being said, I'm going to move on to another, probably another level in the same um, mapping group and finish as many of those as I can before I move on to new other ones. Um, but overall, now that I think I got a good system in place to play the game, I'm going to keep um, playing the levels and maybe even try to finish as many as I can as I uh, get used to making sure um, I know which rides to build, the kinds of rides, how scary to make them, and maximize how much how many rides I use uh, um, set up. And also uh, make sure I have enough um, sweepers, um, maintenance guys, security, and all of that stuff to beat the levels as efficiently as possible. So that is all for this particular review. So if you have any questions, comments, feedback, or anything like that, you can um, comment on this post on the social media sites I'm on, which are all linked on the website at headphonesneal.reviews. Um, you can get all the videos I mentioned for the Cancun trip, uh, podcast, uh, gameplay videos, and all of that on the on YouTube at youtube.com slash Patel N01 and as far as early access to um, the podcast and the video version of the show um, you can visit uh, patreon.com slash Patel N01 so you get the podcast which is ad free and early and then a link to the YouTube version of the show so um, all of that um, all at um, the same time usually about a day or so prior to the public version of the podcast going out but uh and so like i mentioned like i'm gonna try to finish fallout and then resume my not to the old republic 2 gameplay i'll still keep the weekly um roller coaster to roller coaster tycoon gameplay going so once i finish fallout then i'll resume the uh, kotor gameplay and uh, we'll take everything from there but that is all for this particular episode and set of reviews thanks for tuning in and until next time